Today I'm going to discuss a topic that you might touch in molecular and cellular biology, maybe even in biology in high school. But the topic is nucleic acid hybridization, also known as molecular hybridization. And what is this, basically? This is a way that you can, in a lab setting, detect a certain nucleic acid sequence. Say you are a very smart biologist and you have what I going to show you here, a very basic drawing, but you have a sequence or a mixture, let's say, of a few nucleic acids, in this case let's say DNA molecules, and you would like to detect a certain sequence. You want a certain specific sequence. You want to find out where is this sequence in this mixture right here. Now what you do is then nucleic acid hybridization. And to do so, and the first thing that you have here is double-stranded DNA molecules. The first thing that you need to do then, the first step, is to, as you can probably or already guessed, since we have single-stranded DNA molecules here, is that you're going to denature. Denaturing is basically, if you remember well from our nucleic acid tutorial, is when you break these hydrogen bonds between the nucleotides. What's going to happen then is they're going to turn into the single-stranded DNA molecules. And this is done at roughly 95 degrees Celsius. So basically what you do, you increase the temperature to break those hydrogen bonds. Now the second step of nucleic acid hybridization is what we called, or what we call, incubation. And incubation is done at roughly 65 degrees, and you can also call it renaturation. Why renaturation? Because what you're going to do now is turn these single-stranded DNA molecules to, back to their double-stranded DNA form. And you have to have a, a, a optimal temperature to do so. Now the trick here is that this step here, you're going to introduce something very important in nucleic acid hybridization. And this is a DNA or a radioactive DNA probe. What this is, is a known sequence so it's a known DNA sequence. You know this sequence very well. But the special thing about this DNA sequence is that it has a radioactive component. So it has isotopes in these nucleotides. And this radioactive component is going to be able to be detected in the right conditions. So now that you introduce this known, I'm going to write here, this known radioactive probe into this mixture here, now it's going to bind to the complementary sequence. So say, I'm going to write here again, A, B, and C say this is this sequence here has nothing to do with this sequence therefore A will bind back or become the double-stranded DNA molecule that you find here and then C also does not match or does not bind complementary bind to this sequence here so it goes back to the double-stranded sequence that you see here. But surprisingly, and this is what you want to do, is to find a sequence that matches this sequence right here, and it's going to be B. So what you're going to see 
is that one of the single-stranded DNA strands is going to bind to this radioactive probe because it has the complementary sequence. So you have the radioactive probe and that way in a lab setting or in the right condition, say autoradiography, it's a good way to do so, you can, you can see exactly where that sequence, this known sequence, is in your previous mixture. So on the previous slide, I gave you a general idea of what nucleic acid hybridization is and how you perform it in a lab setting. Now, what I did tell you was that you will perform it in, say, cell extracts. Say so you extract DNA from a cell, and then under a test tube or on a test tube, you're able to detect the nucleic acid of your choice using the same procedure that we did on the previous slide. Now I can tell you that there is, and this is what I wanted to show you here on this slide, there is um, a type of hybridization called in situ hybridization where you can do all of this in intact cells or chromosomes. So you can detect a certain nucleic acid sequence in a full working cell. And this technique that I will briefly discuss, because we could go into so much more detail, is called FISH. It's not named after the animal, but if we break it down, it's a short term for fluorescence in situ hybridization. Now let me explain how we name this fluorescent in situ hybridization. Well, say you want to detect a certain sequence of DNA in a chromosome. And you know that a chromosome is a DNA molecule that has been compacted into a smaller structure so it can feel, fit into the cell's nucleus. Now, what you need to know is that you're going to have a DNA probe that is going to be labeled with a fluorescent dye. So that probe now is going to be fluorescent. What happens now, you're going to proceed with the same steps that I mentioned on a previous slide. So you're going to denature the molecule, the DNA molecule, on 95 degrees roughly of temperature so it can break those bonds and open up let's say and then what's going to happen is you're going to then hybridize with this DNA probe so the DNA probe is going to find that complementary sequence of DNA and then bind to it and then you can under a microscope so this is under a microscope, special type of microscope. You can find where the sequence is in your chromosome. So again, very interesting way of using this cool technique to find where a specific type of nucleic acid sequence is in intact cells or chromosomes. So this image that I I'm showing you right here is a real life representation, not representation, but an actual image of fish, of fluorescence in situ hybridization. This is what you can see under a microscope. You can see in this image right here that you have two different or using two different probes, DNA probes, yellow and red. And each color is, of course, representing a specific sequence. So you're looking after two different sequences. And you can see how beautifully you can look at them under a microscope.